Hello, I'm just waiting for the tea water to go. You loved the Valheim stream yesterday. I didn't. Okay. So right now, when we move on to this square with these gems, we just make them small in order to make it not so absurd that he's like, otherwise he would just be standing in fricking gem soup, right? So, I'm going to turn that into a thing where it's kind of bringing the gem up like, oh, you could, you could pick this up if you want. It's going to be like a, the gem's coming up to eye level and he could take it maybe. And then if he walks away in the same way that it grows right now, it'll, um, Same way that it grows when he leaves, it'll just go back down to where it was if you don't pick it up. He could stand on top of the gem, no. No, 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 that is not, that is not how this game works. Also, the gems are gonna be a lot bigger in some cases. If you have ideas about edge cases for the default meta program, depends on what you mean by ideas for edge cases. I don't know what that means. Like if you see problems with how it operates, sure. Um, things that it could do that are extra, maybe, but keep in mind that I'm trying to keep it relatively simple. That said, there probably is going to be some significant stuff added to it. That's why, that's part of why it was broken off into a separate thing. But that doesn't mean we're just going to add everything to it, right? Oh, 
I program these games entirely by myself? No, but I do a significant fraction of it. Okay. So what we want to do is just have a position that this comes up to and then goes back down to. And for now, we're going to sink it at the same time as the shrink. But of course, that could have flavor added. So um, in this simulate cosmetic only stuff. Here's this gem loop. And we have this size T target. Who sets that? That is factored out into something else. It's in gems for some reason. Update gem scales. That's in. Okay, so we only change that. Okay. So we only change that on discrete operations, which makes sense. Okay. So here we go. Um, So now we're going to say uh, pause target is get um, get ready to take position from for the gem, I guess. Actually. Since when we do this, we could set the ID. On this gem. of who is about to take it. Or we could just look it up every frame. Yeah, let's just look it up every frame. Well. Hmm. So we're going to get the taker. We're going to have a get ready to take position. We're going to then say pause equals lerp. Uh, pause, pause, ready to take. We won't call it pause target. Um, by uh, gem.size t. Maybe we're going to rename the size T um, 
as well because we're, we're going to add other as soon as we finish this we're going to add other things too so we go the position is lerp between the position the pause ready to take and the gem dot size t okay so what are these things um Okay. Um, find type at it's got to be a guy at that position. So we'll just return that guy. Okay, so that's getting the taker and then uh, get ready to take position is um, I don't really know. Um, so X is the forward direction in this game, like always for characters. And then Z is the up direction. So we're going to say something like that. Proximity grid. I should make just an easier... If I had unlimited time and budget, would I do everything myself? Probably not because the world doesn't freeze, right? Like it depends what you mean by unlimited time. Whoa. Oh, because size T zero. Yeah, this is weird. Size T zero means... Um, like small, we're going to have to reverse this. Uh, let's just do it instead of making it. Okay. Okay. We're going to call it ready to take. Okay. Okay, so We sort of inverted the meaning of this for the other cases. When the gem is small, okay, something like that. And then this is big to small instead of small to big. Of course, there might be a number of other places in the program that use this variable.
Does Y go to the left? Yes. Why is it strange? It's clearly superior to every other coordinate system you're used to. That's more strange than minus Z being forward. Give me a fucking break. Okay, so this one, this one is snapping because the guy is leaving. It's starting to go down and then he's leaving the square, I think is what's happening, right? Although, it's weird that I don't really see it starting to go down, maybe a little bit. But anyway, this is a, an expected problem. Um, but... When he's leaving the thing, it's fine because we're going to cache this position as the next step because all sorts of things could happen. Like he could be standing here and then he could just get destroyed somehow. Although actually, maybe not. It would be pretty hard. But anyway, just imagine he was destroyed somehow, just disintegrated. You want the gem to smoothly go back. So we can't look up his frame, his position every frame like we were doing. We were just doing that to get started. And we're also going to make it relative to his animation, so it like moves with him, probably. In fact, we could look up his hands and like put it kind of between his hands, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not yet. Okay, so when we do this animation, we're gonna cache it, but we're gonna cache it in data that's not stored in rewind because after rewind, I think uh, we wanna set these, right? So this thing, this ready to take T thing, that's in post undo reevaluate, uh, yeah. So um, the whenever you undo, you will never undo to a time that's in the middle of one of these animations. It'll just be like, Right. You're a left handed coordinates guy. I'm sorry. See, the problem with left handed coordinates is it doesn't generalize. So the problem is the coordinate system that everybody learns in school is right handed. It's a right handed two dimensional coordinate system, right? just in grade school, when you're learning sine and cosine and plotting points and whatever. So to switch from right-handed to left-handed just because you added a dimension is fucked up. It's inconsistent and it doesn't make sense. And then what does that mean? What happens if you go to 40? What, are you gonna switch again? Are you gonna stay negative? Like what? No, the only thing that makes sense given those conventions is to stay right-handed through all dimensions.
or reset all of school so that the y-axis is the opposite of what everybody learned. Why is it right-handed, by the way? Because angles proceed according to the right-hand rule, right? So zero degrees to 90 degrees goes counterclockwise, which implies a z-axis of up. All right. Okay, so um, we Twitch just changed their thing to annoy the shit out of me with notifications. How do I disable these? Thank you. Um, so,
Sorry, I'm just spacing out a lot. This has not been action packed for the past five minutes. Okay. Um, so the deal is I want to make this position not disappear if the dude disappears out of the square. So this thing about a taker, we, okay. So going back over here um, where we do this, um, we're instead going to get this from here. Hmm. Not not ratty to take. Okay, this is a little bit, um, maybe a little dicey. Actually, I can be a little bit lazy about this, actually. Um, let's just say if ready to take T target is true, we're going to go one step. We're going to go one step closer. Um, we're going to say pause writer to take is this and uh, well we'll set it like this okay Um, so this actually, you know, this should always succeed. Who knows if it actually will. And even if it does, we probably want to factor it out. But there's there's a little bit of reason to just make this intermediate step. Okay. So this last pause ready to take. So the reason is <laughs> when we do that post undo reevaluate, we could... We're either snapping back to a frame where the T target is zero or the T target is one. If the T target is zero, we don't need this value because we're not going to, well, either way, we're not going to be interpolating. But if the T target is one, we like do need the value, right? So this is like emulating what we're going to do there. And then maybe we just move that there, except actually no, because we want it to animate with the dude, like I said. Um, Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Anyway, so um, something like that. Good to space out once in a while. I guess so. I guess so. Okay. See, the fact that it's a linear motion is a little bit weird. Like, yeah.
Why does this guy go all the way to the front? I think he's standing in front because of his backpack. I'm writing down notes about what to talk about. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's make it move with his animation and that's going to be a little bit interesting. We're just going to do some really slow, we're going to look up the bone index every frame and all that. These are all things that we could cache and make go faster, but, um, it's probably not necessary because this could probably only ever happen to like two gems per frame at once, right? Um, but we'll see. We will see. Okay, so what's this dude called? Let's, let's actually look. Whoa, the gems are flying. The gems are flying. Okay, well, we need to deal with that. Oh, hmm. Actually, no. I don't know what's going on there. That's pretty weird. Okay, anyway, um, so hair, thumb, finger, cape, backpack, rope, leg. Okay, so I guess I could make it relative to uh, the root sh gent. Um, All right. 
right, let me just say I kind of want to figure that out before we check in, but I don't want to be derailed by it. Um, if that was even what was causing that, which we'll see. Okay, so let me just uh, I'm going to put We're not going to use that yet. I just want to see if this if statement that I added solved that editor issue or if the editor issue is still happening. Somebody is setting their ready to, is that in? I accidentally changed one. Wait. Oh, what? What? Okay. I, yeah. Yeah, I think that'll automatically fix because nobody should have saved that. I don't know. Okay, yeah. Hopefully that's fine. Yeah, okay. So this should be unnecessary then. Carry on then. Currently studying architecture in the organization of a computer. So there's a question that you ask a lot. Is the architecture based on only hardware? What? What do you mean is the architecture based on only? What? I'm sorry, but your question doesn't make sense. Define, define what you mean by architecture in that question. Is the architecture only based on hardware? You're going to have to tell me what architecture means. Okay. Okay, well, so the next step and the next step should be making it relative to that joint. So I'm going to go into another file and like look up look up how to do that. So here we say Okay, right. So if we don't have an animation player for some reason, all right.
if joint name, let's call it bone name, Okay. Um, um, let's just say that. Okay. Yuck. There's going to be a thread safety issue there if we decide to parallelize any of this stuff. That's what you're trying to figure out. What is computer architecture? Why isn't this what your class would be telling you? Why are you asking me? It sounds like you've had one day of the class. Like, is this your number one homework assignment? Question one on assignment one? Like, what's going on?
Okay, so we look up this bone name. Let's just, you know, since I'm feeling slow today, we're just going to make sure that compiles, and it doesn't. Um, right, because I messed this up. I messed up my copy pasta. Right, so this is it here. Okay, so we get a bone. Now, we need to get the transform relative to this. So we get the output matrix. We do a fucking polar decomposition. estimate I have programmed 80,000 hours. Um, yeah, probably more. I don't know. I, I really don't know how to estimate. It's way more than most people. Let's just say that. I could try to estimate for the past, I don't know, let's say I've averaged 10 hours a day for a year, which is not totally unreasonable. It might be more than that. Um, let's say it was 10 hours a day for a year average. Um, that actually might be a little high, but, um, so that's 3000 or, you know, 30, 3,600 hours in a year. Um, so just since the witness shipped, like after the witness shipped is five years, right? So that would be. 18,000 hours after the witness. If I spent that much, that might be a little high. So it depends if you count like thinking about problems in order to solve them as programming, which I do, right? And, and debugging, of course, as well. Okay. Now, I definitely didn't program that many hours a day any time in life until after college. So I've really only been doing at most 25 years of that much programming. And I doubt, I doubt that that's an average for the past 25 years. I don't think, like, I should have programmed that much, but I probably didn't. Um, But yeah, 80,000 hours is probably not that far off for a lifetime total. So far, we'll see if we can knock in another 80,000 before I go.
how many hours have I spent reading Twitch chat? That's the question. Okay, so we do all this stuff. I want to factor this into something that I could reuse. Wait, we're not even using all this. This is just kind of junk code right now. What is even going on? So this, we compile without that, right? Yeah, we weren't even using that. We weren't even using these, right? Oh, wait, fix up Q. Okay, we were using that, but we were not using these. Let's just do a polar decomp for no reason. Why not? Like, let's just, let's just do that. This is all fine, because I'm about to rewrite the animation file format soon anyway. Um, Actually, that's what we're going to do. We're going to print out the frickin' quaternion and put it in the source code. Okay, so... Um, all right. So this stuff, when I make this littler, is just this. This is index, not mount bone index. And then, yeah, this is a mess because it's a mess and needs to be cleaned up. Oh, look, we do have an XForm state that already exists. Wait. Pour in my tea. All right. So local orientation oh
Why are we not calling this? Why are we not printing fix up Q? Because our indices are not being found. Right? Okay, why? Should be bone zero. Oh, it's moon man colon. Right, I forgot that we take this off the top because we remove that prefix because when we map things um, through the animation sets, we want to be able to like swap out the mesh. It's like a whole thing. All right, so now we find it, boom. Fix up Q, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, Okay. So we do that. We take out this print. Uh, we take out this. Okay, um, I think we do that. Yes, it is an in-house animation format. Okay, I obviously broke this. I think that scale factor is going bananas. Why is this scale factor going bananas? Oh. That doesn't seem right. Oh, actually, no. Um, this is actually, this is actually fine. Because that should be the interior of the node, because we haven't added our offset, so, uh, Right, return base plus rotated offset. I was like, oh, we might be scaling it to zero because we're going to the. Rotate, all right, it's just the other order. Okay, it's like above his head for some reason. Oh, because, see, that weird fix up. This is the thing I hate about animation is like thinking about all these things. 
Okay, it's obviously kind of in the neighborhood. It's moving with him. That's great. It's just not supposed to be above his head, really. That will not fix the problem. Maybe I don't do the fix up. I don't know, guys. Life is confusing. I don't remember. That fix up is like a, it's to rotate from minus Z forward, but hmm, well, it's a little bit more where I want it. Oh, I think I want to do Where does it go in in this one? Okay, so this local orientation was like the orientation of the, the entity. So this is to go from our space to this space, right? Oh, this is not even including the... Okay, wait. So in order to rotate this through here, We actually want the conjugate? Dude, I don't know.
I don't know. This is the part where my brain turns off. Okay, that did literally nothing. Well, not literally nothing, but not what we wanted. Dude, I hate, this is where like all these unnecessary transforms from one space to another just make things too hard to think about. Or not too hard, but harder than they freaking should, all right? It's like, why do you do this to yourself by adopting these shitball conventions? Animation packages, I'm talking to you. The answer is because they barely knew what they were doing when they started it. And then by the time they knew better, they were too afraid to change their code. All right. Um, you know what? Let me just use the position anyway. I actually don't know if I want the joint orientation anyway. Okay, so that's more like what I expect. It's a little too high, which is fine because I just, I sort of used this old value. And this is now, it's, I don't know where this root bone is. Um, I forget how to turn it on. Maybe that rendering is broken. We used to draw it. Anyway, traditionally it would be around the hip somewhere, but it may not be there for this model. Um, so yeah, this offset, um, let's just assign it down here to something different. Um, Because what we're going to do probably is once we decide exactly what this is, we're going to change the guy's animation and so forth. And hopefully he won't be as far into the square. Okay, so here we go. And oh, and this is also this position is the position of the bottom of the gem, right? Because the gem is. Um, yeah, the gem is. <laughs> positioned in such a way and actually a little bit below the bottom of the gem because this hover value I think is still being added um, and we may animate that we may have it bob up and down or something um, so let's go let's actually go z whoops What is happening? Okay, this looks better. I mean, we're not going for final right now anyway, because final will involve different animations and all this stuff. We're just going for something better than what we had. All right. So here we go. When he's standing in the square, there that is. And we can add more style to it at some point. I don't know. It, it doesn't actually look that good attached to his animation, but um, maybe we could ease that in over time or something. But so the next step is going to be then when he takes the gem, instead of making it discontinuously move like that. Oh, you know what? The gems. So right now I had all these gems floating. Let's fix that. 
They're all floating because they're in a room that's powered, but that that should not happen. That should only be powered gems that do that. Okay. Okay, gems. Uh, simulate. All right, so uh, the lift, the lift. Okay, power spin theta, where does that happen? If gem dot room power level, gem dot on T target. Okay, so Oh, you know what? Instead of doing this here, we just shouldn't add lift T. that'll fix it room target and solo target go zero to one so yeah there we go see it's only that one So next, uh, when we put stuff in the inventory, we want it to be smooth. And then when it's coming out of the inventory, we also want it to be smooth. And that's probably going to be a butt pain. Um, but that's OK.
All right. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do when we pick it up is, uh, so right now, as you see, it teleports into his backpack. In fact, right there, even do a position you couldn't see, which is not good. Um, teleports into his backpack. Uh, the first step is just to linear interpolate it into his backpack, right? And then once that's done, we can linear interpolate it through an arc like over his head or something and have it tumble or do something cool. Um, and then after that's done, uh, then I don't know, sometime later, we can stylize it. Because all these things right now, you see when he walks onto the gem there, it just sort of, like it linear interpolates in size and position and it doesn't look great, right? It, it looks better than him standing inside a giant gem, but it like doesn't really look that cool, right? So part of this is building something that we could stylize in some way later, probably procedurally, but who knows, right? Okay. Okay, bink. Okay, so we need to add, um, a parameter that says, hey, we're, if we're going into the inventory right now, this is how far we are going into the inventory, right? Um, and I'm going to call that going into inventory T. And maybe we'll have a separate one for going out of. Like, you could overload this because you can't really be going into and out of at the same time. Um, but you know, yeah. Okay. When we start going into the inventory. So the other thing to keep in mind is, right? If you're a noob at video game programming, you'll just say, well, when you start going into the inventory, I could interpolate from the 
whatever the target position is for this and stuff. But you've got to keep in mind, um, you know, I might pick it up there before it's done animating and stuff, right? Before it's done shrinking. And you want it to be continuous, like, regardless of what happens, right? So, you know, in these cases, of course, it looks like, you know, it goes into his body and stuff, but that's, we're going to tweak probably the animation so he stops earlier in the square and stuff. Anyway. So. Is this character a recent addition? No, he has been working functionally for a long time. It's just we sort of punted on the problem of how to make him look cool. Actually, we do a little bit at a time. So this thing about how the gems are actually mounted on his backpack, we did a while ago. However, it didn't totally finish it. And I don't, I really don't like the current way that it is. So we need to redesign that. Is it from one of the games of the anthology? Well, the original game, you played a character who moved, but it was literally like just enough to have a square that you move around to do things, right? Like this particular character concept is one that we did for this game. So so we're just going to checkpoint whatever um, the position, orientation, and so forth were at that time. But we have a challenge. which is uh, like we would sort of be getting these from the last frame like we're on the sim step of the current frame or the the movement step and we sort of get the values from the last frame. That's one way to do it. Or we could continue doing the other thing, but I don't, I don't, yeah. Let's not go into that. Um, okay, we're going to say, Okay, so we're going to have a uh, you know, I sometimes am the captain of long, large variable names, but I'm not feeling it right now. Orientation is in a vector three. All right. Okay, so when we put a thing into the inventory, we're going to do that. Um, and actually, we want this to be minus one. So sometimes, depending on what range variables are, right?
So minus one just means these values are garbage. We're not using them. If this is between zero and one, then we're going into the inventory. Okay. And um, we can do that. So that's attached to entity ID, I guess. Um, Oh, um, sorry, equals zero. In the post undo evaluate, right? We need to do this. Okay. So going into inventory T equals zero. And okay, so when we set this, Wait, that's not the right place. Here's the right place. Position gem into inventory, it makes sense. to figure out all this shit. Okay, this is actually not good. <clears throat> Here we're using the this mount system where we say where things are mounted on the entity and Honestly, kind of not a fan. I don't know. We did it this way in the witness. It was fine eventually. Um, The problem here is this way of doing things sort of introduces this discontinuity because this mount system says, hey, here's where the position is for something that's mounted, right? Um, the problem is we sort of just turn this on as soon as a thing goes into the inventory. Um, so we kind of can't, like that system doesn't, know about interpolating things. And we kind of don't want it to know because we want to be able to do whatever interpolations that we want. Um, so I kind of feel like that we need to um, not do this this way, <laughs> which is fine. Um, it, okay, so step one, 
make sure we compile with this variable added that we're not even using yet. Step two, maybe even oh, check in, but I put all these no check-ins about explaining things. Okay, so step two is gonna be make it so this doesn't work this way anymore. Um, which actually isn't that bad, I hope. We'll see, we'll see. So step two is gonna be make it discontinuous the way it is now, however, um, with, Uh, this data not coming from the mount slots on the entity. Right? Okay. That's going to be step two. And then we'll go from there. Um, maybe we'll then check it in. We'll see how we feel uh, before we do the thing. Okay. So I actually want to have another thing. Um, Okay. Ah, let's do it right now. No, let's not. Um, assert that this is after we animate the guys because we do not want to be a frame late looking up the attach points. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to do a thing here. We're going to do a thing here where we do the same thing that the mount code is doing. All right. So now we're step one, getting it to compile. Great. Okay, great. Making sure it's not totally destroyed. Oh, boy. Oh, I added a thing. I didn't tag it correctly, did I? Yeah, I didn't put no serialize on these. That is a dreadful mistake. Are the inventory gems part of the model? No, um, they're the same mesh. You want them to be the same mesh because you want any state, like we might have different meshes for different gems to give variety and stuff, right? <clears throat> so, Okay. Okay, so it's still apparently working. Cool. So now It's not too many no check. It's only four. I'm like, ah, so many already. Um, so, ah, so, ah, so, what do we do? We remove the mount, release the bats. Um, okay, so all this stuff. Probably going to break people's save games. Maybe not, because we're just going to ignore it. Mm. 
And there's also this visible versus invisible thing that we're not going to do yet. We could just put him deep inside his backpack or something. All right. So where do we do the from inventory part? Because the thing is, all this mount bone name stuff, um, this is also going to be getting reset when we move it out. Is there like a remove dependency? Here we go. Drop gem at. Mount, oh, we just set the mount parent ID to zero. Okay. So here we go. So now let's see if this code runs and the gems won't go into his backpack visually. All right. Okay. So it just gets real small, but stays in the same position. That means he's carrying it. And then he could drop them and stuff, right? Okay. So this just means How did Valheim go? It was very boring. There aren't classes in this language. This language does not have classes. Okay. Okay. So this language only uses structs. No, it uses procedures and integers and floating point numbers and arrays and pointers. It uses all kinds of things. Types. It does use semicolons. That is correct. It uses semicolons every day. Every day we use semicolons. Uh, okay. So this is uh, promising, I guess. So now though, I have to go, I wanna go into mount and um, I, th I don't think we're gonna use this mount system this way anymore. It's a little bit of an antiquated way to do things because it does imply this discontinuity, which is kind of a drag. Um, so, When we get rid of the distinction between visual position and position. Oh, no, that's not ever going to be a thing. No, no, no. That was, that was a temporary idea I had that is not, it is not the way, according to the Mandalorians. It is not the way.
Okay, so here we just want to do instead of calling this faster object to world visual, which it isn't even. Okay, so we're going to say um, get a mounted pose for an entity and its parent. I'm going to swap the order of the arguments because they're this way here too. Although they're not this way here. Yeah, let's do it here. All right. This makes sense. Like this is also the order that you multiply them in when you multiply transforms. So whatever. It's maybe this one that has to change. Okay. So we get mounted pose and then um, So then we're going to say test this on artifact prior to check in. Not artifact by valve. Valve killed artifact, I know. I know. I mean, it seems to me like they kind of killed it before they released it, but it is what it is. Not text this, test this. Okay. This is going to be a uh, get mounted pose. Hmm. I think we want mount position, mount orientation here. Right. Um, okay. So we don't have an E here anymore. I can see that we don't need it for anything else. This is output orientation. Oh, manager.
quit scale. We want to do this. Okay. So we're just moving a lot of this weird junk over here. We're going to get rid of all the weird junk eventually, I feel like. Uh, okay, so scale factor. Right, okay, so we need mount scale, which we didn't pass because I thought we were going to do, do it. All right, eta mount scale and so forth. All right, idnex. Idnex. Did I return a vector three? I keep doing that. What is my major malfunction, Lieutenant? Okay. Now, what's going on with this? How bad did I break it? So here it looks fine. Um, you can't tell though, because this is supposed to be broken, right? So we need to get these artifacts here, because these, oh, they don't get mounted actually. I think maybe only particle systems get mounted, right? These ones, I think, get put on his mesh. Yeah, that's also probably not. That's going to go into this upcoming email. I just got an idea of a level. If I said what the engine release will be like, don't worry about it. We don't, I don't want to be bothered about that stuff. Just don't worry about it. I don't know what you mean by what will it look like. We'll give out the source code. I'll probably post it as an imgur and then you get to OCR it. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a while off, guys, before this engine release happens. Like, it ain't happening for, like, at least a year.
Okay, so does anyone set them out position except particles? Like literally no. Literally no gameplay uses this. Okay. What has mounted particles? Does anything? I mean, particle groups do. But like... Okay. Maybe this means I broke everything. What if I run the... This is a release executable from before I did any of these things. I also don't see particles. Great. GG's, everybody. I have no idea if this is working now. Let's see. Let's just get some characters that have particles. So like this guy makes particles. I mean, they appear to be working, but I don't know if they use the amount. Gems could be a bit faster, I know. That's stuff we're doing later. We don't care about that right now. Like, if they, oh wait, I just broke it. What happened? What? Why did I, why did it break? Oh, this is the release build from before we were doing any of this stuff. Yes, that's why. Oh yeah, uh, which also means I need to test the wizard here. Right, yeah, like if it went faster, it wouldn't be like stuck in his body for as long and stuff. But when we stylize it, we'll control speed and like derivative, like faster sometimes and slower other times. It's, it's not gonna be super simple, right? All right, we need wizard, Mr. Wizard here. Still looks reasonable. I mean, I might have broke something, but it's not obvious and we're probably not really using it. Okay. I need to turn on my heater and warm up some tea. And then, um, so I can get rid of this no check-in. And then we shall continue. Uh, by maybe I'll just look at the no check-ins because I oh no 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 we need to continue by before we check in we need to put the gem in his bag
Just waiting for the tea now. Waiting for the tea. I ever do a TED talk? I don't know. I mean, the problem is, so the audience is large for a TED talk, which is nice, but the problem is the format is not very good. It's like a 20 minute format, which is, it's pretty hard to say meaningful things in 20 minutes, which is why TED talks trend toward vapid inspiration, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't really watch TED Talks as a source of useful knowledge. So, and you have a feeling that TED Talks used to be better, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, the whole reason we factored this this way is so we could do this mount math without using these slots on the entity. Which means we can go over here. So instead of E dot, we're going to have gem dot, but instead of mount position, mount orientation, mount scale on E, we're just going to have local variables for that. Because if you remember in our old gem file, in all this code, we just did this, right? So like, this is just like local variables now, which is part of the point. Whoops. Um, So we're going to get the default quaternion there. Ha! 
How do you remove the fear of talking to large audiences? Um, you just do it a lot. Really? Um, so mount bone index, we need to set So here we could say um, get uh, gem take mount bone index, right? Um, right. And then we do that, and then we do that, right? So everyone who tells you refactor your code if it's more than 10 lines into functions or whatever, no. Refactor it according to how you need to use it. I need to call this from two places now instead of one, so I'm breaking it into a separate function. It's like really not hard. It's like really not hard. But people make it way harder than it is. All right. Okay, so now this is where I needed to call it from. This is annoying because I don't have the guy available. Should be able to clean this up once we animate. Animatronic. Let me pour my tea. Oh, we'll, we'll let it go a little more. E guy is fine. It's like an e girl, but it's an e guy. It's fine. Manager, uh, comma, gem dot attached to entity ID. If Anybody got advice for starting Tai Chi? Um, I don't recommend trying to learn it from a book or a video or anything. Uh, you really should get in-person lessons. That is very hard during COVID time, but since things are starting to lax up and Tai Chi is traditionally done in a park, look locally for people who may be doing social distance Tai Chi lessons in the park. That is my advice. Yeah, trying to learn it, you're, you're not like, if you try to learn it from a video or a book, it's really hard. <laughs> like, it's hard to learn it in person, all right? When people can watch exactly what you're doing and give you very customized feedback. Like, you could get very lucky. You could have a good teacher or a bad teacher, and it matters, like, really a lot. All right. Whoops, I forgot an and.
Get mounted pose. Is that not what it's called? Get mounted pose. Oh, is this scope file? Did I not read my own error message? Uh, however, there's a file scope declaration. Yes. Let's just move that down a few lines. All right, undeclared identifier parent. Uh, this is on uh, guy. Oh, that's on gems. Okay. Okay. Now they're just disappearing off into the universe, which is not great. So we're going to have to look at why that is happening. Do we see them out? No, 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 no. But it's at least getting all the way through the code because it's assigning. All right. So that's kind of not that bad. It's weird to put scale in here because you just multiply it like, oh, I guess if it's non-uniform. Eh. Eh. All right. Let's just see what's going on. Close this extra Visual Studio we ain't using. Run this one. What are my thoughts about drinking ginseng? I have not ever been a, a big ginseng tea guy, so I don't know what to say about that. In lieu of proper lessons, there are probably preparatory things you could do, like starting a stretching and meditation. Yeah, stretching would not hurt, for sure. In fact, it would help. Um, you don't have to be super serious stretching but just like making sure, like if you can't touch your toes, make sure you could do that, you know. Um, like Tai Chi has, there are some really impressive like slow high kicks that people do. I can't do those and it's fine, right? Like unless you're going to go to Tai Chi tournaments, it's expected that you just do the best that you can on those. Um, Yeah, and just just don't overdo stretching. Be careful with it. 
Is this the only character that picks stuff up like this? Yes. What's a paper book talk that really changed the way I view programming? I don't know if there is such a thing. Like, dude, I learned programming 39 years ago. Like what? It's not like I was a newbie and then saw something that changed. Like, it's not like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Like my view of programming has been annealed in a serious way over the course of 39 years. You went into a split too fast, ripped some muscles in your butt. Oh, oh. I got dropped on my head once in throwing practice, but um, that was not good. Okay. For the very common if e guy and e guy dot thing type statements, have you thought about extra sugar or something for handling the a little bit, but it's just not that important. It's just not that important. And it, it wouldn't be an implicit explicit it would be an explicit check, it would just be um more terse. But yeah, something like that will probably happen at some time. It's like those things happen sometimes. They're not super common. And one pitfall that language designers fall into is they focus on stuff like that. Like, oh, I could, I could make this one thing cooler. And it's like, yeah, great. But is that the most important thing that you could do? Okay. Disappears, comes back. Why? Okay, let's put just one gem on the map because that'll make it easier. Let's, let's delete some of these other objects too, just for basic. Cleanliness. All right. Great. You know what? Gone. 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 Ah, we might want that someday. All right. There we go. Boom. Boom.
Um, I don't think that I would let any free contributor, open source contributor work on the compiler. I just don't think that's a valuable way to get contributions, except in very extenuating circumstances. Um, I think we're either paying people to work on it or we're not. Okay, so I pick up the gem. It's attached to entity ID. Somehow it's not going to the right place. No surprise there. This kind of stuff always breaks, unfortunately, the first time. Not, not breaks, but it's always incorrect. All right, so okay, here we go. Okay, mount bone index. One, that is correct. Mount scale. Mount scale. All right, so pause, ori, scale. Um, these are not totally unreasonable values. These all look totally fine. Hmm. Oh no, that's not where it is. We need to fix that. This is screwed up. This is supposed to be for gems falling in the water, but like that looks like it's active everywhere, which is totally stupid and broken. We shouldn't be doing this here. Nevertheless, these values look reasonable. This is almost an identity rotation. 
Oh wait, no, 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 it's Z point nine seven. But still, um, it's that's a unit quaternion roughly, which is fine. Um, it's at eight comma twelve comma point eight, right? Which like. Is this at 8.12? Yeah. So it's just real small. If I zoom in, I bet we see it inside the dude. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh. You know why? Because uh, we're using the wrong bone. We're using the bone for his torso that we were using for the holding that's not where this goes. That is not where this goes. This goes, um, in here. That this is okay. We're going to say mount bone name is this, and we're going to say we're going to say get mount bone index of this. Is it freaking called? Get gem take mount bone index. That's why I couldn't find it. Okay, this is just going to say this. See, like if if you factor according to desired use just things start making sense. Like, hey, this is kind of a glue function, but not really, and it exists to encapsulate basically this idea that we have this reference point of a known name, right? Anyway. It just works out. You just do it. It just it just works great. You can delete three quarters of what you learned in programming school, honestly. Okay. Mount B. That's not what I wanted. Mount B uh name. Hey, look, it's in his pack. Duke. Hey, we're going to be able to check this in as a temporary thing and then continue. Now we're going to play, whoops, we're going to play at a really slow frame rate and people are going to go, Mr. Streamer. Oh, wait, why is this? Why is it promised one Zach? What, why did that autocomplete? That is not allowed. Yeah. What? the fuck is happening?
Okay, anyway. Mr. Streamer, why I know I'm better than you because I know that games are supposed to run at frame rates. And this isn't running at a frame rate. Wh why? Why am I better than you? All right. All right, anyway, now I've got two gems. Ho, ho, ho. Whoops, we didn't mean to do that yet. We wanted maybe something up here. I don't know. Okay, the point being, it's working fine. And then if I use the gems cheat command, oh, that breaks. Why? That might be due to something. That, that might not have anything to do with anything new. Oh, we're not setting inventory index. Probably. Oh, six. Oh, because we're not, we're not setting them to invisible. Right. So when I commented all that code in gems, I took out this thing that sets them to invisible because that is also a discontinuity. We might make them invisible later, but like, eh, right? So um, they're actually getting drawn. So. Gems. There we go. We've got all the gems now. Okay. Great. Now I want to do the no check-ins and then I want to check in. Um, okay. Thiggins. Okay, this refactor we pretty much did. Assert that this is after we animate the guys. Let's make this also GII and sure. All right. 
So we're gonna check that in for now. Um, start rejiggering the way stuff goes into dude's backpack. The way gems go into dude's backpack. That's great. Okay. Next, what? Well, now that we're no longer using the mount variables, we don't have an inherent discontinuity anymore, which means that we could interpolate toward the thing. Um, so, Actually, this really should be down here. Okay, all this stuff um, should be What was our variable called? Oops. Uh, going into inventory T. All right, so we're going to do that, but then also we're going to do this down here. Um, we only want to do this like lift and hefts and just all this active stuff. Okay. Because we're going to grab this pose, actually, we already do, I think, and interpolate, right? Um, did we do that? GII start position. I don't think we did that. This still shouldn't do anything extra. We're not actually, yeah, we're not actually doing anything crazy. See, it just pops there. It just pops there. Now, Well, we do the thing. So here we say, um,
Well, Now the thing is, we are not yet animating this timer. Um, let's do this. Mm. Did I mess this up? Hold on. That's a quaternion. Oh, we said I said pause. I'm a dummy. All right. Okay, so I picked it up. It's frozen there because we're not running the interpolation. But what this proves, well, we are running the interpolation, but the interpolant factor, that t variable, is always zero. So what this proves is like we actually recorded the positions correctly, right? All right. And then when I undo, it's in the right place because we reset all that. So now we just need to add to t. Um, we're going to say... Um, T plus equals uh, DT times, I don't know, 1.2, whatever read, hard-coded rate for now. Um, so, We reset this if we get to one. Otherwise, um, we uh, update it. Ta da! Okay, it pops back out for now, but. When I grab it, ta da. Okay, uh, it kind of looks like we're non uniformly. Uh, yeah, I think the linear lerp doesn't normalize, right? Um, let's try a slurp there. We don't care. We don't care if it's fast. That is not the minimum energy rotation. Let's make it the minimum energy rotation. Okay, so uh, okay, so there's this thing with quaternions. So if dot product of the start ori, let's call it ori and not q, 
the start orientation and um, ori is less than zero, you just need to negate it. Or, ori, I don't know. You, eh, it, in some cases, it might matter which one, but. There we go, minimum energy rotation. See that? You just learned quaternions. Congratulations. We're gonna wanna add extra spins when we do the thing, but um, all right, so now we gotta do the same thing, but going in the other direction. How cool is that, dude? Any character animation plan for this? Yeah, we'll do something. We'll do like a pickup animation. There will be at least a pickup, a drop, and when he's standing here, this is just his default idle pose. It's the same as if he's standing here, right? But we'll probably do something where he has his hands out, like ready to do something with it, or like as if he's making it float, right? Okay. Yeah, it's going to go over his head. That's like the only the only reasonable thing to do. But before we do that, our minimum bar for tonight is we want continuity in both directions, right? So I want now smoothness in the other direction. And if you toggle it back and forth really fast like this, it should stay smooth, right? And then the challenge is going to be that like the target here is gonna be updated. Yeah, we're gonna to have to interpolate from the other direction at a different time, which is another reason why it's maybe good to keep the interpolants separate from now. Okay, you know what? Let's make sure that I didn't do anything really dumb. We're gonna Benny test the game. I'm assuming that goes well, we will do what I just said. <laughs> How fast would the Benny test go flat out? I don't know. Um, the simulate function is pretty much the bottleneck right now, I'm pretty sure, so I'm not that worried about it. That said, updating character animation might be the bottleneck, so maybe you could turn that off. Wait, did I run the right? This is going to be good because sometimes, again, sometimes there's stuff you do in your game and it's like temporary. And you're like, oh, yeah, we're going to make this better later, but then it's crappy for a long time. So we're going to make this less crappy and that's going to be good. Um, Uh, 
Uh oh. I'm running a Benny test, guys, so that means I'm gonna have to fix one of the levels. That's the new rule. Uh, we'll also check this in, I guess, if this passes, because it's good progress. always had it lurping to the target transform and the input would switch between the two different transforms. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by the input. This is complicated because there's like several different, yeah, there's several different things that could be happening. And you know, whenever you do that, you just have to make sure that you account for everything. That's all. Switch the target transform. Yeah, I mean, you have to negate the parameter or whatever, right? If you decide to go back in the other direction. And there's, yeah, I mean, you just have to ensure continuity if you switch in the middle. That's all. However you do that. There are ways of doing it. There are ways. Seem to be doing fine on the Benny test. Well, magnitudes might succeed again since I, I think it did. Wait, no, it finished kind of fast. I don't know. Anyway. Just did it by always lurping if the current transform is not very similar to the target transform. Yeah, there's other questions, right? Like, do you value, do you want the interpolation speed through space to be constant or the interpolation in time to be constant, right? Stuff like that. Um, the way that I'm gonna do it here Yeah, I don't know, okay. Yeah, we'll probably just negate the parameter if you switch it in the middle. And then we're going to be storing the values in different places. Okay, so 54 fails. That's what we expected. Uh, but now I have to fix one. Okay. What is this one? Oh, I don't want to work on this one. That, that involves some things we're going to change. Let 
What is this one? Oh. So this one may not make sense anymore. So the idea behind this one was that you get the character up. Uh, to the top. So let me see. You need to you need to do some smash stuff for the warrior to get through. Um, and then So the problem is, I don't know if we can really do this level, because the problem is, the levels could only be one apart vertically, and we're already using this upstairs area mm, yeah so this is a level where we changed the way the these force fields work and this level was a trick about the force field right so um let me just start by just like changing this this will be a down one that goes up right so uh are these the same flavor no oh. Um, and then this, um, all right. Where's the button at? How, how is this button supposed to work? For that gate. It's not anywhere here. What? I don't remember my own level, everybody. Switch. Is there a switch? There's no Nintendo Switch on this level. Oh, because it was open beam? I guess you use the open beam to open that. Oh, that's r really not going to work. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how to fix it then. We could just take it out of the rotation. That could cast count as a fix. What am I testing specifically? Everything. I 
any chance the game would include a way to dump a solution in some kind of formal notation? Eh. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so the problem was, okay, part of the cool trick, the idea was supposed to be you put the thief on here and then you use this to do the open and raise him or her up. Now that's weird because I don't know what else you use it for. So like, what's the point of the rest of this frickin' level? I guess the point was you need to keep the thief on top to get there, right? Okay, the problem is now that's not really a point. Like, I mean, I guess, I guess you could. Like, it, it was supposed to be funny because it's supposed to be simultaneously. How do you, as the warrior, get out? And how do you send the thief to the exit? And that is no longer possible because these gates don't work that way. Except watch this. Watch this. We could put a block there. <coughs> All right. So if we put a block there, I'll turn cheats on for a minute. Okay. Then when he goes and opens, then the thief could get on. And if he were able to close it again, whoops, if he were able to close it again, that would be the thing to do. However, um, he can't close it again if it's red beam, but he can if it's a button. So we could delete this. We could put this button like here, right? Okay. So then you might think if you were being a silly, whoops, that you need to do something 
where like the thief drags this, whoops. Because the thing is you can't really get any of these pieces on this side. That's gonna sort of be the, maybe the puzzle. And the deal is, well, I could just pull this block. Um, you know, and then, like it seems like maybe you wanna do that so this guy could get out, but then once the thief could pull, how do you get out, right? Um, you know, honestly, we should shrink the level, I guess, uh, so that, so that it doesn't seem like the warrior should just push the block. Although even if that's the case, like, oh, um, so anyway, the point is if you keep the thief on the top level the whole time, then you're okay, right? Um, except, yeah, you do need to solve this, which is weird. I'm actually not sure. Oh, and you don't actually need, oh. Right, okay. So you actually do, you do need the thief to come down. Right. And then the thief could get back up in some way. Okay, hold on. You need both characters to come down. No, I mean, I guess that's the thing is you, you can't, okay. <laughs> you need something to press the button with, right? And it seems like it's that block is sort of maybe the trick. The phasing through the wall is not a move. That's me cheating. Players can't do that. I'm doing that just to skip the beginning of the puzzle. Um, Yeah, I want the point to be maybe the thief staying up. If the thief stays up and is over there. Yeah, okay, the problem the problem with this gate thing as it works now is the idea can't be that the thief stays up because you could always lift the thief if you want, which kind of sucks. It kind of ruins the idea. I mean, I could just turn it into a much simpler level. where the thief's exit is just on top and that therefore the thief has to stay on top, right? I think so. I think so. It's a little bit of a bummer. but it is probably for the best. Okay. So if I do this, 
Oops. Just like that. And I delete this. Put this here. Delete this. Like, at some point, if you have this much machinery and it's still not good, you're kind of losing, you know? You know? Or you're definitely losing. Okay. So this level would then be How do we get the finger down? Whoops. Oh, hold on. I left cheats on. OK, so we're going to go here. Um, we're going to rearrange this. Okay, so we're keeping Thief up there. We're doing this like that. And then we could do Super Smash Brothers, get Thief across, get Dude out. Is it the best level? No. Is it the worst level? No. Um, note, actually, let's get one from here. This level used to be about doing tricky stuff with the gate. Oh, what? But... The change to gate behavior made it no longer make sense. Now it is just a 3D level about keeping the thief on top the whole time. All right. OK, so is where is that? Is that in unplaced levels? No, where is it? It's in misc beams. I guess that's fine. Okay. GG's, that is fixed. Um So now we get to go back to the animation stuff and we get to make things go the other way. And it's going to be kind of straightforward. I'm going to skip an O here. We have Gi and Goi.
Okay. You know what I want? I want some seaweed salad. Fortunately, I have some seaweed salad. Can I do a breakdown of how my entities are batched each frame? No, because we don't really do that yet in the final form. Okay. So Yeah, I'm not sure about trying to stabilize interpolation times right now. I don't want to worry about that yet. Um, I just want to do the other thing. Um, okay, right here.
I sound a lot scarier now than I did in my streams. What do you mean? What do you mean? Am I like a scary skeleton? Okay, so these are going out of inventory. Okay. That's great. Let's actually keep these together for now. Okay, so if it's coming out of inventory, we set <clears throat> the start positions. Now we want to have this, let's make sure it still compiles, right? Okay, great. So the interpolation has to happen in a different Place. Okay. So this is going to be going out of the inventory. I think we want out to be faster. <clears throat> I don't know about that, but we'll just see. Less cheerful. I'm a little tired. I go through phases. I'm a little tired right now and kind of could use a break and, you know, stuff happens in life. There we go. See that? Totally continuous. It's great. So it does, see how it goes kind of slow if I hover it here? I think we might, we might want to scale the time when we go in or out. Anyway. Yeah, we definitely want it to be a lot faster to come out, I think. Let's make it like a lot faster. Yeah, today I was like feeling a little tired and I was like, let me just, let me just uh, stream. It'll be an extra thing that I do today. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it is what it is, guys. I'm very happy to be getting this done though, because, oh my God. Okay, so... We could check this in as a, actually, let me, let me do this. I kind of want like this, how it gets slow. If you're like halfway between or whatever. Oh, maybe it's fine for now. You know what? We'll do that when we stylize. Um, Cause I think the next thing is make it go over the dude's head, which I 
was going to be interesting. <clears throat> Here's what I think. We could actually use math class What's the best thing that we could do? Like if I were Casey, I could do a thing. Where we start by linearly interpolating it just up to a known point and then down. Hmm. Like, I kind of don't, like, the cheesy-ass thing to do would be to go. Um, through the same point over his head every time, because that's easy. But what we could do. I don't know, we could, like. We know the forward point. <clears throat> we could pick a point that's upward from that a bit. A point that's upward from the backpack point and arc it. The, the problem is that the way that we're doing this interpolation is not really going to let us do that, I don't think. So right now, like even if you're going to do it as two line segments, right, we kind of can't quite do that yet. Because, like, say you're most of the way there, and then you come back. We kind of need to know where you were. Right? So, right now, when you, when you switch back and forth before it's done, like this, uh, like this, right? Um... We're just setting the the parameter, the interpolation parameter for the opposite direction. Um, what we actually need to do is, and this is a little bit scarier because you can mess up and introduce discontinuities. We actually need to get the target position and then say the parameter is one minus the current parameter, right? And the problem with that is we can't quite do that because there is feedback. So right now we are getting the output position from these interpolation parameters or from, uh, you know, there's this other procedure that does all this like lift of the gem. Is it powered? Is it not powered? Right. Put it in front of you that kind of stuff. Um, that stuff, now is gonna be messed up by this interpolation. And so if we're expecting to grab from the output, we're not gonna be able to. 
So we need to store another copy, <laughs> which is a little bit crazy. However, we could not worry about that yet. And we could do it for the direction first. Uh, we could do it for the this direction. Or what we could do is just make it go over his frickin' head first and then not worry about uh, not worry about the reversal yet. Like we could lose continuity for a little bit, which will be sad, but fine. You still have a starting position, an ending position, and a point over his head. No, we don't have all those things. <laughs> we do not have all those things. Um, I could decide that we have those things. Um, I could decide that we have those things, but then we lose continuity, um, which, like I said, is probably fine, I guess. Eh? Continuity is going to be hard, actually. So maybe we punt on that for the moment. Even though I just did it for the simple case, it's going to get really hard. So I think, I think we just do the thing that we want to do, <laughs> and then we figure it out. Particle animation in a position swap. Eh. No. No. Here's the thing. Yes, we could do that. Yes, it would be easier. Sometimes in game development, it is a good idea to do, it is a good idea tactically to do the easier thing. But if you make that a habit, then what you're really doing is kind of choosing not to do the hard things, right? Which, eh, that may appear to be good, kind of, but what it does is it leads you down the path of not being able to do hard things, right? This isn't even that hard. It's just like, uh, yeah. All right. We're going to ignore continuity now. So if you do it in the middle, it's just going to mess up. And that's going to be fine. Um, we're going to say... Um, What's the best way, if I actually want to find the point on the plane that is between these guys, but somewhat up? The, the, the problem is you don't want to accidentally get a singularity, right? So what I could do is... Um, no, I get... Okay. So what we could do, we can t see where this line segment intersects the plane in the middle of the dude, which is relatively straightforward. Um, I mean, the, the problem happens like what, what if you goof and they're on the same side or whatever, but in that case, we, uh, we pick a thing. Um, we, we pick a, a default fail point. Um, and in fact, we'll, we'll do the, actually we'll do the default fail point at first and we'll just kind of go over that, right? 
then do we do we solve for a parabola? How do we do this? How do you solve a 3D parabola between three points? That's well defined, right? Parabolic hyperboloid. Sillies. Sillies. All right. I'm probably could just do this on a piece of paper, but first you need to find the plane the points are in. That's easy. Find the dot product of this normal with any of the points. There's a distance from the origin to the plane. Yes. Oh, it, he's describing the plane. This is a better answer. But there is if you choose one as the apex, right? Like given that we know that the, the top point is the apex of the parabola, there should be just one, right? Can do it in 2D and transfer. Yeah, yuck. It's always cleaner in 3D. Bezier with control points at fixed offset. No, we don't do control point. Eh, fuck that. No. The Bezier curves are terrible, dude. They're terrible. I don't know why people use them. They're not good. They work for artists? No, they don't. No, they don't. <clears throat> what do you use for animation curves if not Bezier? Um, I don't really know what people use for animation curves, but Again, okay, you guys are confusing what animation packages that are off the shelf happen to use with what is actually good, right? We all know that Bezier curves are used in computer graphics a lot. They were an early idea that was attractive because a cubic polynomial is simple, but they're like not that good for things, actually. All right? Um, They're not very controllable. They're not very stylable, et cetera, right? Um, for animation curves, you should just have something relatively complex um, that lets you style it, and then you sample that, and then you compress the samples so that you don't have to reproduce whatever all the things are on playback. I don't know which animation packages do that and don't. I don't care, right? It's like, it's just not... It's like decibels, <laughs> kind of, not really, but like it's this thing that some people decided that was how it was, and then everybody who came later can't really question it, right? Like the benefits of Bezier curves are...
I mean, the major benefit, like if you're doing some animation curve stuff, right? The major benefit is that if you set them up in a certain way, you can get C1 continuity or C2 continuity or maybe, right? But there are other ways to ensure that anyway, like with an actual controller. So it, yeah, I said decibels. Anyway, yeah, Bezier curves are not, we do, we use Catmull ROM splines in the witness for the power cables and that wasn't very good. If I would do that over again, I would not use them. Um, what about fonts? Same thing. I think, I think with fonts, it's a little bit of a better case because you kind of need to rapidly evaluate them, but I still, I doubt, I doubt that they're the best font representation either. Like if I were designing fonts, I might use some kind of implicit surface representation actually. It's probably better than Bezier. Busy curves are super neat. Great. Something called nerves can do more for you. Yeah, nerves are from the 1990s. Nobody uses them. What people use now um, is. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sign distance functions. They're way better. Yeah, that's actually what you should use for fonts is sign distance functions. And actually, a number of the newer font renderers do that by converting, you know, Bezier format TTFs or whatever to sign distance functions. But if you authored them as sign distance functions, they would be simpler. Because like going from Bezier to sign distance function is a little bit awkward and annoying, right? But yeah, if you just author them that way. Uh, Cabal ROM splines, I mean, are just a specific cubic polynomial, right? They're, they're just, you know, there's lots of cubic polynomials. They're all annoying. Or, I, I mean, it's the cubic polynomial, right? There's different ways of just factoring it to, to use it. Yeah. So if you wanna know what are sign distance functions, I can link you to the following video. Yeah. I'm just getting the link. You could watch this video. You will know how they work. And you will know what is better than Bezier curves for modeling, for high end modeling. Yeah. Like, Cutting a hole in a Bezier curve is annoying. You pretty much have to convert it into a manifold in some other representation and then do an operation. It's just like not, it's just like not good. Okay.
I'm just going to have it, we're just going to lerp linearly and, um, and that's it for now. And it's going to go through a point right over his head because this will all be very easy to do. Um, okay. So we're going to say, and we're, we're just going to make that a function that we can make more complex later. Okay. So, uh, Apex is get apex guy, comma gem. We're not even going to use the gem, but we might use it later. Who knows, right? So if t is less than 0.5, else something else, right? If it's less than 0.5, pause is lerp. This, comma, apex, comma t times two, else, pause is lerp. Uh, apex pause uh, t minus 0.5 t minus 0.5 times 2. So we just go up and then super simple, kind of stupid still. We're going to style it later like I've been saying. All right. So get apex. Um, okay, we're going to say pause is object, uh, oh, um, Okay, so we actually kind of want it to follow his hip bone, right? So we're going to say, um, that's actually not what we wanted. Um, oh, we want to just get ready to take position. Pause is get ready to take position from guy. And we're going to say pause.z plus equals one dot. Five. I don't know. That's probably not enough. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, hold on. That's way too much because it's, it's pretty high up, we remember. Okay. So going in, it uses that apex, and going out, it doesn't. We do need this to go higher. And we do want it to go faster, I think. It's just too slow right now. Okay, we have to make it come back out. Just wait till you see the fanciness. Wait till you see the fanciness. Okay, so we need to make it do the same thing uh, on the way back, which is this one down here. OK. 
Okay. So here, um, going out of the inventory. Okay. Same deal. Oh, we don't have the frickin' guy. You know what? Let's put this on the guy because when you take or drop the thing, we can compute it. And then if you're moving, oh, actually, if you're, if it's going into your backpack, we want the apex to travel with you. If it's going out, we want it not to travel because it's dropping into something on the ground while you move. So um, get uh, non-moving, oh, uh, gem.apex at drop time, all right? All right, so we're gonna say um, pause is lerp. Um, Apex T, right? Oh, T times two. And T minus 0. 0.5 times two for uh, Apex to pause. Uh, great. Uh, so we need to make that variable. Okay. Let's put GOI just to prefix it all the same. Okay. Okay. What is the best way to do frame rate independence? It really depends on what you're trying to do. It really depends. That looks really dorky from there. I am almost tempted to do a spline, actually. I mean, I don't like splines, like I said, but it would be an easy way to do this particular problem because you have three points. And a derivative at the midpoint. Is that enough? I don't know. You can set as many derivatives as you want to fix it. Okay, you want to see the, the spice? 
Let's do the spice. Okay, when it's going into the inventory. We are going to spin the gem by some amount, but it's going to come, the spin isn't going to mess anything up because it's going to be a multiple, an integer number of spins, right? Um, so we're going to make it tumble as it goes, right? The spice must flow. All right. So we're going to say, Extra spins This is a quaternion It's going to be around the I mean, I don't know probably we might want to pick this axis dynamically, but um All right. What about catenary curves? I don't really know much about those. Okay, that, okay, the problem here, the reason it looks like a balloon with the air let out is I forgot the following problem. The origin of the gem is at the bottom point. So if we just do extra spins, it's going to be rotating around the bottom point, which looks goofy and stupid. See that? So it actually, it works, but like things don't move like that physically, right? They don't, they don't rotate around points way outside their center of mass. So it looks stupid. We could try to fix that. The way you do that is again, you like fricking. Oh my God, what a pain in the butt ski. Is it worth it? Oh my God. Um, So what you do is you just offset it, right? You subtract the position. You rotate, right? And then you add the rotated offset. And the thing is, my brain breaks when I've got all this stuff happening simultaneously. Like, Can I do this with just So this is rotating on the inside so we could subtract From the ins, uh, let's just see. Um, let's 
center points of five times uh, scale dot x, right? Um, Okay, times scale dot x. Uh, all right. So we say pause minus equals center, pause plus equals. Um, Uh, rotate, I don't know, or maybe the conjugate. I, I probably screwed this up real bad. Okay, that was the opposite, but it's pretty cool. That is cooler. It looks stupid, but like slow, it looks stupid, but. Oh, I think we need to subtract actually. See how you can like just have fun with minus signs and whatever? All right. Oh no. Um, you know what? We just want the extra spins actually. And then maybe even just I don't know. I actually don't know if this is mathematically. Uh, let's pass the time when I really want to think about this. Okay, this is awful. Okay, maybe the spice must not flow right now. Um, Ah, uh, you know what? We could do it a different way. Um, if I multiply it on the outside, it's probably easier to think about. It might be a better animation too. So you always have this thing with rotations, right? Do you multiply them on the right or on the left. If it's on the left, then it's things that, well, depending on your conventions, if it's on the left, then it's things that happen after. And if it's on the right, it's things that happen before. And that means different stuff, right? So if we want this to tumble around, I probably have a rotate around function, right? No. Anyway, to rotate around a point, you subtract the center, right? You do the rotation, and then you add, hold on, you add, uh, you, it's li just linear algebra, right? So if you have, um, R times O plus P, Right. It's been so long since I thought about this.
Yeah, this is super beginner stuff, and it's just my brain is being confused by, by so many things right now. Um, because we're not really talking about rotating one point. We're talking about like how to store the data on the entity in this factored way, which is just a little bit different. It's probably not different enough to matter. Right? So, So what you would do, okay, and then there's what, what you would do and then what you actually, what math you actually want to write. So if you're conceptually doing this, right, you say, let's move the entire gem to the origin of the space, right, and then rotate it and then move it back. Um, and then there's an extra piece, which is the fact that, see, there's two pieces, <laughs> There's moving the gem in world space like to the origin, and then there's the part where the gem actually, the, the position is not at the center. So there's an extra piece as well. And okay, so that's actually why it's not necessarily simpler to do it on the left. If we do it on the left, world space is factored in. If we do it on the right, it's not factored in. Okay, I'm doing this wrong actually. So this minus that I'm doing at the end, this actually, this is the part, if we're doing this on the right, this part actually gets multiplied through the whole thing. So we actually wanna say minus equals rotate center comma ori, that whole thing. Okay, and then I think we say Is it like, is it that easy? You should have it centered in model space. You might think so, but there's reasons why we want it this way. All right, well that's like closer if, if the concept of closer matters. You know what? I think I'm just rotating it around a point that's too high now. I think this is actually might be right. Because um, the gem is not even close to one square high, so 0. 0.5 might be like outside. All right, so, yeah, there you go. That's not a very good axis as it turns out. And our extra spins are like not coming out at the end. Hold on. Why is that? Oh, it's the position that's not coming out. Because we're interpol right, so we're interpolating the position, and the extra spins comes out. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, this is extra confusing because the interpolation is targeting that other point, right? Um, let's see if that's a disaster. Okay, that's a disaster. See, we're adding Okay, actually Yeah Hmm Hmm. Problem sort of is. I mean, you can see clearly f from the way that I did this here. If extra spins, I mean, if extra spins is the identity, we don't want anything extra to happen. but it is so we could say All right. You know, it would be easier just to write the rotate around point function. <laughs> Let's just do it that way because that that's generalizable and we can use it and all this stuff. Okay, so we're, we're going to do that. Um, Is scale going to affect this? I don't think so. Let's see. Um, all right. Pause Ori is rotate around point. Um, okay. Um, So whatever the orientation is, we do this.
so we have this position and orientation and rotated center. So basically you say position minus rotated center um, rotate and then plus rotated center. It's really simple, right? Okay, rotate around point uh, vector three, returning new pause vector three, new ori. Wait. Um, extra spins. All right, so, um, Rotate, pause, rotation. That's just how you, how you do that, right? And then um, Whoops, this is a quaternion. I haven't given enough treats. That's true. Whoa. Okay, that was that was crazy. Oh, this center is not, yeah, this center is not in world space. <sighs> Rotate center Ori. This is very silly. So basically, we're rotating it by the orientation. We're adding it to the position to get what is the center after our currently requested rotation, and then we're going to rotate it further. It's just easier to think about this way. And if I don't screw it up, okay, I screwed it up. What, what is going on, guys? Why I am fired? This is not that hard. Um, So we do some extra spin computation. We say rotate around point. Oh no, this is okay. This is stupid now. This is this is okay. Yeah, that that was not good. There we go. That still doesn't look good, but. So it's weird because, so now that I'm rotating on the right, we're rotating around a vector in world space. And this thing is aligning with that vector, which might be fine actually, because it converges, it kind of converges to the thing. It wouldn't do that, though, for gems whose final orientation is not some other way. All right, we at least we tamed this stupid math brain, so that's fine. I actually think it should flip the other direction. Let's start with that. Um, We wanted to flip the flat face toward his head and go like over his head. 
There we go. Whoop. We could just do one extra spin, right? That also might not shove it into his face so hard. Do I use something like GLM for, no. If you're writing a game engine, you should have your own matrix stuff. There we go. Shoop. You know, that's just enough to be cool. It's a little too fast to see, really. Wait. Yeah, I mean, it's... Oh, you know what? Wait, we're doing this in world space. So it's not even... It's not even going to be consistent based on... You know what? Even though... Okay, this is stupid, but... Uh... Let's rotate it based on the orientation of the guy. Like, again, this is all like me really wanting to have rotated it on the right. But because my brain wants to do it on the left, we're doing it on the left. So, um, We're going to say axis is uh, rotate vector three dot uh, uh, guy dot orientation, right? So we have this axis relative to the dude. Um, that's his left, and so. Yeah, I think we still want to be negative. Are there more people also working on the game code? Yeah, there's like three or four people total. One, two, four or five people total. Uh, but mostly doing engine and tools stuff. Like gameplay is mostly just me right now. Ooh. All right, and then if he's facing this way, it should still flip over his head, hopefully. All right. So he goes, yeah. Okay, like I said, we're going to do like real stylization of this later. I just wanted it to be, to be cool enough. Now, we're going to... have enough of these all right that's way better it just feels cool. And then once we have animations on the guy, it'll feel better. It doesn't quite feel like you're putting it down. Maybe I'm just not used to it here, but, um, you know. That's definitely good. Like I said, it just feels better to have this working this well. 
and we'll make it nice later or whatever. This could even be a thing where the animator, because we already have like bones, right? This could be a thing where the animator just defines the path that these go in the animation file. And so we don't have a way to export that right now, but we might. I'm actually surprised it behaves that well. I don't understand why it's still continuous, honestly, when I just spam it like this, but whatever, I'll take it. the advantage in having such an effect done programmatically instead of by an animator because animations have to blend when they're in between or they're in weird things and that's not e it's not easy to do blends that look good blends look crappy almost universally so if it's procedural you don't have to worry about blends but I mean, it's not like this is a good animation, right? It's pretty crappy. So the good thing about having it hand authored is it could be higher quality. So maybe what we could do is like retarget the positions, like start with a hand authored animation and then retarget based on uh, where like the animation would be authored for this gem is going to a certain position and we could like, you know, just do a fix up, right? So right now, most of the work that I've been doing is not really about making this animation happen. Not really. A little bit of that last part with the apex and whatever it was. Most of what I've been doing is just getting the code structured so that this could even work, like just having the right variables tracking where we are and all that stuff and not using the hard coded mount system and whatever. So this is great. I consider this Miller time. Uh, we're going to do a Benny test to make sure this didn't break anything. And as is tradition, that means I'm going to have to fix another level. I just had an idea. Anyway. It just, it's way, even, even with this little programmer animation in here, this is just way better than like having it silently disappear and then pop behind him like it did. See what I'm saying? Like just seeing that it's like, oh, okay. And then you can imagine like the gem flashing when it lands in his bag or something. You can imagine Actually, we're going to redesign the bag because we need it to have some different properties. But you can imagine, like right now, the gems are kind of just stuck on there. 
and they obviously are not like in the pockets or whatever. So you can imagine that feeling better, all these things. This is secretly a bejeweled knockoff. You found the secret in the oatmeal. You found the secret in the oatmeal. Just waiting for this to compile. And here we go. Let's hope that we get 53 fails or fewer. Have I done any work on modules yet? No. <laughs> I mean, some basic stuff about module paths and whatever. Um, there's actually a significant decision that is going to, or a significant thing that has to get figured out that I'm starting to work on mentally that was not discussed in that thing. Oh, okay. Now here's the weird thing. This might be the crash that I was seeing before that might not even have it. Oh, no, it's this. Okay. Hmm. Variable is optimized away and not available. I'm going to try running a debug Benny test, which will take longer. Um, but it will give me more. Oh, it's this thing. So 
this like only happens during tests and only happens sometimes, but it's the same bug. Okay, the deal is something is like swapping out Let me just see this and hmm. All right. Okay, so when we get this error, it's actually a fuck up, the game is fucking up somehow. Um, so I actually want to find that. This actually doesn't have anything to do with the stuff that we did because I was getting this error this morning and then I stopped getting it. Um, so it is reappearing, which has not surprised me. Actually, you guys, if you were watching the stream the other day, I was playing some promised levels and the gems like weren't really attached to the backpack in the right way. They were moving around randomly. We also haven't fixed that. So I think that's the same bug as this. I just wasn't able to repro it. Um, so I think now we're kind of reproing it. Uh, so I hope it repros into bug. Unable to match. Okay. Oh, you know, I could have looked in the logs. That would tell me where that was. Okay, so I just want to see what the state is of the animation player when that happens. No. Okay, the rule is if Benny test completes successfully, then I have to fix a level. Um, and trying to repro... Trying to repro a crash doesn't actually count. Because <laughs> otherwise I'll never be able to work on crashes that don't repro. Like, okay, here we go. We got it. So we're calling find best time based on foot match. Um, but what is going on with the animation player? It's got five freaking channels, first of all. That's a lot. That's that's maybe just like because um, we're playing tests, right? Um, output matrices. Okay, do any of these happen? Left state, right state, base state. So probably... Probably the uh, the node names are not. Oh, current states is zero. So this just basically means we didn't eval. We have not evaled. We went okay. Like when we when we evaluate this animation player, we set the current states. Now, why do we have output matrices but but not current states? That I guess maybe when we set the mesh, we init the output matrices. So this is, um, not 
Okay. So this is that we didn't eval for some reason. But I could I could sort of work around this by putting an animation player eval here. Okay. It's kind of a hack, but eval here. Uh, if player dot uh, current states is empty, then we'll say assert you had better have set the mesh or what even are we doing here? Um, eval player okay whatever let's try that oh right not equal to null i need to fix this somehow somehow What interview questions do you ask in interviews? Um, you can see the, the Casey and Sean McGrath video. That's a good video about how to interview. If you're asking how do you prep for an interview that we would give, I, that's not a question that makes sense in this case. Why are so many fails? Now worry. What's going on? Yeah, that that in Okay, I kinda feel like we fixed this problem. So the deal was just sort of, if we try to, let's do a release build and try to try to do the real Benny test. Um, the deal was just sort of, if you tried to send an animation message on the first frame of a level before, because it, the, you know, the, the order of a loop to minimize latency goes input first and then sim, like simulate whatever you need to simulate and then render so that you render the most recent simulated state. And simulate for this game and for most game includes uh, figuring out what happens with the skeletal animation on the characters. So, um, but our input causes the animation graph to change. <laughs> so, um, Yeah, I actually, I see for players and monsters, we explicitly eval them to time zero because we don't want them like entering an animation as you start the level. We want them to be just like standing and idle. So that must be happening with particular characters for which we didn't do that. I don't know. I sort of feel like this isn't 100% solved, actually, the more I think about it, but we'll see what happens. WY is getting a workout, yeah. Yep.
Okay, I'm going to hope these are just the normal fails and they're weighted toward the beginning. Because I don't feel like we did anything that should cause more fails. I feel like the scariest stuff we did was the mount changes, which we already did a Benny test on. Any other on-topic questions about the game? On-topic questions. Should I get more snacks? I kind of want snacks, but I kind of think it's 10 p.m. and I shouldn't really have more snacks. You know how it goes? What do y'all think? Snack? Snack time? Snacks are good, maybe small. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. What if I just go do more pull-ups? One pull-up per snack. How many am I up to? Um, I slowed down on my gains a little bit, and then I realized I was maybe waiting too long between. So today, I did almost 11, right? But my last day of doing pull-ups was two days ago, so I'm not in like full recovery, right? Where I don't think so. I think it takes like two off days for me to get back to full. Um, and I've had one off day. So I did, I did almost 11 today. I'm a lot better at pull-ups than when I started. It will just say that. <laughs> 11 is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, it depends. I mean, for someone who's not far from 50 years old and weighs 200 pounds, it's not bad. Eleven in a row. Yeah. 11 for the day, no way. I could do 11 for the day back when I could only do one. All right, 53 fails. Yeah, I have a, a bar that goes on the door frame. 
Yeah, I'm I'm turning twenty soon, but I like I'm fifty mentally. Do I worry that the pull-up ball will, bar will fall? I did worry about that in the beginning a lot, but now I've done it enough that I just don't worry. Maybe it will still fall, but I don't know. A bunch of takes too long, fails near the beginning. Yeah, they could be the same bug. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just, I'm here to fix one level. Um, that level will be... I don't know. Okay, it's weird because so the fallible levels we noticed yesterday or whenever that was that they were playing back inconsistently at different speeds. That is a good thing to know. Um, that means we shouldn't really record any levels that involve timed falling because they'll probably break when we fix that bug. Um, What about staircase? Staircase has falling, but it's maybe not. Hmm. Oh, this is that. Oh, never mind. I don't like that level. It's too complicated. Um, oh, this one. Is this one solvable? Let's see if we can figure out how to solve this one. Right, so the deal is these monsters can hold up so much stuff because they're strong. If we move this out of the way, they die. Maybe he shouldn't rotate under these conditions, but yeah. Anyway, um, now this guy can't move by himself, but he can if he's strong. So the deal is we have to kill all the frickin' monsters. And how do we do that? Well, I can easily kill... Oh, okay, well, you can't do that, but... Maybe I could push him around. Maybe I need to push him around the other way. Oh, then there's this guy over frickin' here. Yuck. So how are we to do this, really? Like all the monsters have to go. Let me just see what the test does. Because I don't, I, I've solved this level before. I remember liking it. I don't remember the solution right now. Okay, now it's obviously messed up. I think this, this might be like an undo bug. So we do that one and the left one. This one has a lot of undos in it. So, yeah, he goofed and died. I feel like this was a change in the undo policy. Okay, from here, how do we get to a solution?
I think we use the block on the end to push the monster into the other beam. Let's try it from there. Let's see. So we're just going to do this. And we're just going to go ahead and do that. Screw that. Okay, so now Actually, this is kind of annoying because I want to get this block. Oh, I can. Okay, yeah. So we do this, right? Oh, but like I need to strong push it. I see. I need to do this. I get it. I get it. Okay. I need to come here and then I need to do this. Yeah. Okay. 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 This is good. This is good. This is what we call GG's right here. I mean, this is kind of stupid, but yeah, so that was, um, that was an undo policy issue. All right. That wasn't too tedious. It was kind of funny, you know? Okay. So we do that. Um, we're going to go back here, push those. You guys are gone. We're going to do this. Oh, wait, I didn't even need to do that. So here we go. Uh, actually, we could just move this. Well, let's just, I don't know. Push. Oh, maybe I can't really move him closer. Uh, okay, so we want to push him south. If we do that, he leaves the beam. So we push this here. Um, then he's still strong. We go, woof. That's great. Now we go here. There. It probably doesn't have to be as far, right? Yeah, actually, this could just be here, I guess. Yeah. So it's not as bad as I did it. You don't have to run all the way around. All right. Uh, let's turn back up the speed. Bam. Bam. All right. Great. Commit. Um, um, promised guy has gem animations, period. Uh, fixed the test for level strong monsters. The good stuff. Was my release plan? The plan is to release the programming language when it is ready to be released. Can you put beams mirrors on a monster's head and aggro it to rotate? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if that would work. Any thoughts on the fossil SCM? I do not know anything about it.
How do I think game streaming services like Stadia will affect game development in general? They will not. All right. Well, I feel very happy about that piece of work. Things are better than they have been. We're answering some questions about this character and how it's going to work. It's still not totally good, this whole thing about the gem going in front of him, but it's better. People who use consoles with TVs already put up the same amount of latency as Stadia on PC. Um, false. False. False, 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 false. False. Don't believe the hype. Yeah, Wolfram and Wolfram 2 were the first professional games I worked on. Those were the days. Those were the old days. Wish you could find a game that was anything like that. Um, there's got to be some stuff today. Like. Mm, I don't know, actually. I mean, Titanfall is sort of a little bit like when you get in the mechs because it's team on team mech battles. I mean, it's really different, right? It's n not remotely the same, but it's a little bit like that. It doesn't really have the strategic component. Um, The, the Battlezone reboot that happened way back was a little bit like that. It was a little more like an RTS. Um, military sim genre. Yeah, like World of Tanks or something is a little bit like a modern version of that. But with realistic things instead of sci-fi. Do I have any strong opinions on continuous versus discrete puzzle elements? Um, continuous feels messy most of the time, yeah. I think discrete feels cleaner and better and helps you. So there's both the, the weird human interface element of things feeling satisfying, and there's also... Um, Removal of the ambiguity when you're solving puzzles about am I supposed to be able to do this, but I'm just not executing well enough, right? You sort of get that in Talos principle when you're like, oh, should I be able to 
squeak this beam between these points. That's something that they could have avoided with tighter level design by like noticing where people would try to do that and avoiding it better, which is hard sometimes, but they could have done it a little better than they did, I thought. Um, but still, the, that continuous element makes that happen, right? Like I almost think Talos Principle would have been a better game if you could only put the things down. If it was like Indiana Jones and you have to put the pole with the the gem on it in a thing, and there's just like a grid of those things, I think that would have made the game better. Have I played Rain World? Yes. Doesn't everyone playing on the same hardware and server remove most of the software hardware development issues of trying to get the game to run on multiple systems? I mean, I guess the thing you have to realize is that's the small minority of game development effort, not super small, but small, um, especially as hardware gets ever more capable. And secondly, in order for it to solve that, it has to work as well in other dimensions and it does not like, Yes, if you could magically run games on a server and have all else be equal and just display the picture and it's perfect, um, then your answer to your question would be yes, but that is not the situation. Hey, guess what? You know computers? You heard about these things called computers. One thing that has been consistent across all of computers is that they get much more powerful and faster and more responsive when whenever you have slow storage that's far away, you cache it locally, right? That's why main memory, you have L2 cache and L1 cache and L0 cache and registers, right? You don't just go to main memory for everything. Hard drive, even SSD, kind of slow. Well, you have memory as a cache to the drive, right? Files on the internet, you have a local file cache so that you can get things locally without having to do internet requests, right? So Stadia is like a reversal of that entire caching situation that we know makes things tremendously better all the time, right? Your console hardware or your PC hardware in your room is the fucking cache that makes your game good and responsive. And they're trying to say, oh, you don't need that. It's like out of, pa you should know that that's out of pattern with everything else. Right. Do I plan to release the compiler as open source when it comes out? Here, here's a question. Why? Why do you want to know? What would you do with the source code? Do I think a new game developer should publish on a game console, a PC, or all of the above? Um, I mean, look, when you're just starting, it's really hard to get started. Just do PC because it's easier. Um, if you've got PC under control and you feel like you want more players then port to console, but it takes effort, man. PC easier. Do I think it's a worthy effort given the benefits of it were possible, but you're putting the cart before the horse. You have to, it, you're asking what if questions that don't make sense. You have to first make it good, and then people will use it for the reasons that it's good. Nobody, nobody has ever made it good. When considering if work of art is great, do you judge each aspect separately, or do I judge all aspects at the same time? No, it's not even like either of those. It's sort of like the second one. Like, great things are unified 
like they feel strong. They feel like everything about them is together and intact and just works and supports each other, right? You don't like be like a gaming review site and go plot nine out of 10, photography seven out of 10. No, it's not like that. And then if it makes 8.3, it's like a good work. No, that's not how it is. You would do nothing and still use it closed source, but it seems to increase acceptance. Well, I, fine, I don't care. I mean, I'm figuring that out. For, the answer is probably it'll be released in open source form in some way, but you know, there's a lot of things to not like about the way programming languages in the open source world have worked. So I would like to try to figure something out better. I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means. All you know is you played MGS5 on PS4 streaming and the latency and image compression was almost not noticeable. Um, I, I have not used that particular streaming service, so I can't say anything about it. That said, I kind of doubt that I would feel the same way. Also, you just have to realize the cost is just tremendously higher to stream a game. Like just the, I don't know. Personally, you wouldn't use a programming language that wasn't open source because otherwise you're totally dependent on the proprietor of the software to provide and maintain everything. I guess, but if it's open source, you're totally dependent on some team of open source people maintaining the thing, right? Which may not happen or may not competently happen. Lots of open source projects degrade and the more complicated ones uh, degrade faster, right? That said, there is the possibility of people picking it up, but like, eh, you know, I don't know. That said, I do agree. I think vastly more people would use something if they knew that the source code was available, even if they didn't personally want to look at the source code, right? But there's some downsides too. I'm just trying to figure it out. Do I think I'll write an operating system one day? Maybe, maybe. You're pretty sure most casual gamers would not notice the latency. Eh, what, who are you considering casual gamers? I mean, people buy PlayStation 5s because they're noticeably better in performance and visuals and all this than PlayStation 4s, right? Or, well, with PS5, hardly anyone has seen it, but repeat that for four versus three, right? Do you expect those people are suddenly going to stop caring about that visual delta, right? Like, dude, I watch games on Twitch all the time. They look terrible. <laughs> like, and I'm not even trying to play them. I'm just trying to watch them passively with a lot of latency and they still look terrible. So... So don't, I don't see a difference between a movie in which everything about it feels cohesive except for the acting and a movie in which many more things suck aside from the acting. No, I mean, obviously one of those is better than the others, but like, it's not really going to be a great movie if the acting is bad, is it? Like, isn't acting kind of important? All right. Anyway, it's time for me to go to bed, guys. Uh, 
thank you for coming by. We're going to find someone to raid. Because I think the past stream or two, we didn't do that. If I sign off way too late at night, I'm just a little too tired to do it. Let's see. This is like some health programs. All right, that's not programming, that's health programs. I don't know, guys. I'm just not, nothing's jumping out at me right now. Why isn't game development not a category? I don't know. I don't know. You have to ask the Twitch people. Far North Development. That sounds good. Except he's not there. Hope I'm not getting DMCA'd for that. Where'd the dude go? Is he gonna come back? Says he was there. Well, okay, this guy's back, so we're going to raid him. Thanks, everyone, for coming by, and uh, I'll see you later. Some other We might do a stream tomorrow morning. I have an idea for something I want to do tomorrow morning.